mga mommies, in today's video, ang pag-uusapan natin ay ang postpartum phase or ang fourth trimester. Ito yung time na nagre-recover na yung ating mga katawan right after giving birth and dito natin nararanasan yung maraming bleeding, yung pananakit ng puson kasi nagko-contract yung ating uterus dahil bumabalik siya sa dating size and ito rin yung time na nagno-normalize yung ating hormones. Kaya naapektuhan ng ating emotional and mental state during this time. So if you have already experienced giving birth, alam natin na hindi ito yung madaling panahon. Especially for new moms because we are still trying to figure things out. On top of yung mga physical na discomforts and physical na pinagdadaanan natin, with all those challenges na pinagdadaanan ng isang babae after niyang mga anak, minsan din natin maiwasan na mag-focus dun sa ugly side of postpartum. Pero, kaya ako ginawa tong video na to dahil gusto ko namang bigyan ng pansin yung good side ng postpartum phase. Kaya sa video na to, I'll be sharing with you the things that I've learned during my postpartum phase. Yung mga insights na nagain ko from that, I saw the importance of focusing on the good things because we don't want to miss out on the blessings that come with being a mom because I believe that being a mom is a gift. It's a privilege from the Lord. Kaya, if we already know the ugly side of postpartum, why don't we also try and look at the good side para naman mas madali ang ating recovery period and also, for us to appreciate kung ano yung mga naibigay sa atin. So, before ko i-share sa inyo yung mga natutunan ko, quickly, I'll just give you a background of what I experienced myself during postpartum. So, nung nanganak ako, ang initial na reaction ko was, I was very, very happy and relieved. Happy kasi, syempre, nanganak na ako, wala na yung mga mabigat na pakiramdam, and mas madali nang kumain, hindi na rin ako masyadong nagugutom. Kasi nung buntis ako, lagi akong nagugutom. And pag kumakain ako, parang hindi masarap yung lasa ng pagkain sa bibig ko. Kaya, when I gave birth, nawala lahat yun. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm also very happy when I saw my son. He was so cute. Siyempre, ang bias ko, diba? Nanay ako eh. <laughs> and, um, I was also relieved to see na he, he is safe and I am safe. Actually, nagkaroon ako ng C-section. So, isa yun sa mga bagay na nag-cause ng anxiety sa akin at first nung mga anak na ako. But, I was very relieved with the results. I was very relieved with how the delivery went because I saw my son and he was very safe and I was also safe after that. But the first 24 hours, I was very groggy. Pag na section ka kasi, bibigyan ka nila ng painkillers for the first 24 hours. So, may nakakawit na IV sa akin. Doon nila ina-administer yung antibiotics at saka yung painkillers. And the entire time talagang para akong inaantok. Actually, hindi parang. Inaantok talaga ako the entire time. And ang hirap magpahinga, hindi ako makatulog ng, hindi ako makatulog ng maayos, syempre, because every 2 or 3 hours, kailangan kong padidehin yung anak ko. And we had visitors around, and my part sa akin, parang I felt the need to entertain them, which is actually wrong, because I just gave birth. And pwede ko namang sabihin sa kanila na hindi ko kayang mag-entertain, or hindi ko kayang makipag-usap sa visitors nung time na yun, yung first 24 hours, because I was really groggy. Um, I wanted to rest so much. Also, I had a difficulty with breastfeeding. Dahil, hindi ko naman alam na ganun pala kahirap ang breastfeeding. Doon ko nalaman na parang napakahirap palang mag-breastfeed. <laughs> Pero alam nyo ba, matututunan nyo rin naman yan in time. But, pag nanganak ka kasi, and it's your first time, if you're like me, doon ko na-realize talaga na may learning curve pala ang pag breastfeed So, I had to deal with that. May inverted nipples din ako. So, it was very hard. Parang twice as hard yung naging experience ko with breastfeeding because I have to use a nipple shield. I have to use a nipple puller every time mag breastfeed ako. And the preparation period takes time bago mo papadede yung anak mo. So, nakakataranta. Natataranta ako every time na magpapadede ako kasi umiiyak na yung baby and kailangan ko pang i-prepare yung boobs ko for breastfeeding. ba And it was really hard. So, all in all, actually yung experience ko, physically ah, physically ang naging experience ko I, I really felt like a mess the entire time. Uh, I really didn't know what I was doing. So, ah, grabe. Nung nakauwi naman na kami dito sa bahay namin, syempre, I also had a lot of emotions. So, parang mixed emotions. Parang happy at the same time anxious. Kasi syempre, wala na kaming mga kasama na mag-aalaga or tutulong sa pag-aalaga ng baby ko. Kami ng husband ko, nag-decide kami na we just do it on our own kasi wala kaming makuhang katulong na stay out because yun yung requirement namin. So, we ended up na kaming dalawa lang yung nag-aalaga sa anak ko. 
And doon ako nakaramdam ng anxiety, doon ako nakaramdam ng takot kasi syempre wala na yung mga nurses doon, wala na kaming mga kasamang nurses para tulungan ako sa pagpapadede, sa pag-change ng diaper ng anak ko, yung pagpapaligo and all those things. So it was very overwhelming for a first time mom. Yun yung experience ko and I thought to myself, grabe talaga what a woman has to go through. We all know the, the reality of postpartum. We all know na hindi siya madali. So during postpartum, ang dami na nating mga pinagdadaanan na mga physical challenges, no? So we all know that. We all know those things. Ang dami nang nagsabi sa atin and almost every siguro halos lahat ng mga nababasa ko they, they talk about the real things that we will go through postpartum. And that's a given. And I feel naman na this time around, gusto ko naman na mag-share sa inyo ng mga magagandang bagay na pwede nating mag -gain. The good things that we can gain out of postpartum. And that, hopefully, it would bring comfort to you. It would at least encourage you if you're on your postpartum phase right now and it's your first time. I hope that this will encourage you. It would comfort you. I know na as women, as mothers, we need so much encouragement and support from each other and from the people around us. So, ano yung mga natutunan ko nung postpartum phase? Number one, I learned to trust in the Lord. And I'm still learning that until now. We know that when we encounter something difficult or we're going through problems, we hear people say, trust in the Lord, to the point na nagiging cliche siya. But you know, when I got pregnant and when I gave birth, I realized na talagang ito yung kailangan ko. Trusting the Lord was something that I really needed to survive postpartum phase. Siyempre, nandiyan yung physical challenges na pagdadaanan mo, yung mga recovery, yung bleeding, yung breastfeeding. Samahan mo pa yan ng trying to figure things out on your own and samahan mo pa yan ng mga hormonal imbalances. And if it gets out of control, you really can lose it. Parang na-realize ko, mababaliw talaga ako if it gets out of control. And kaya nung nanganak ako, and I was going through postpartum, I really cried out to the Lord for help. As in literal, I really went to the Lord and cried for help. Kasi I, I was so scared na baka ma-overwhelm ako ng emotions ko, and I might lose my mind, I might, I might not be able to be the best mom that I can be for my child, you know, during that time. That's why, so I'll say it again, si Lord lang talaga ang magiging matibay na sandalan natin during postpartum and beyond. Because for me, I can really attest to this that it is really God who got me through this. So I hope I can encourage you that kahit mahirap itong gawin, really, you need to trust in the Lord. Pag sinasabi nila sa atin na you need to rest, yes, let's rest physically, but let's not forget to rest in the Lord. Ibig sabihin, let's not forget to put our anxieties, all the things that we can't control, let's just give it to the Lord because it lightens our burdens and it, it makes recovery easier for us if we don't stress so much on the things that we can't control. Number two is God made us for this. This is more of an insight for me that God made us for motherhood, that meaning He created us to be moms. Kung nahihirapan tayo ngayon, always remember that we were designed to be moms, we have that innate ability to nurture, we have that innate ability to be all that moms can be. Kaya isipin natin, ibig sabihin, we are equipped for this. We are equipped to be moms. Iniisip ko nga lagi, ano kayong mga ginagawa ng mga kababaihan nung unang panahon, nung mga time na hindi naman kasing convenient ang tulad ng panahon natin ngayon. And I was thinking, kung kinaya nila, kakayanin ko rin. So kakayanin mo rin. Number three is, I should not be selfish. Of course, this is so obvious, pero, and I know that even before I got pregnant, even before I became a mom, alam ko na napaka-selfish kong tao, pero parang mas na-highlight pa to nung nagkaroon ako ng baby kasi, and I realized that for me to be a better mom, I really need to take my eyes off myself. I really need to stop being so selfish. Yung mga panahon na na-stress ako dati, yung mga panahon na nagiging monster mom ako towards my son, nakakahiya. Pero, I wanna be honest with you, I became that kind of mom because I realized those were the times na may gusto kong gawin for myself. Mas gusto kong unahin yung sarili ko over the needs of my son. And I failed to see that my son is more in need than me. 
na hindi niya kayang pakainin yung sarili niya, hindi niya kayang alagaan yung sarili niya, hindi niya kayang paliguan yung sarili niya. Dahil mas nakafocus ako sa sarili ko, hindi ko nakikita yon or hindi ko masyadong napapansin yon. But when I started looking at his needs, when I started seeing his needs more than myself, that's when things got easier for me. Hindi na ako masyadong nasa-stress pag inuuna ko siya. Mas nakikita ko kasi na mas nangangailangan siya kaysa sa akin. Kaya, I really need to remove my selfishness. But I'm not saying that you don't take care of yourself. Of course, you need to take care of yourself. Sabi nga nila, self-care is not equal to selfishness. Of course, we really need to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of our son and other people around us. But, we need to also adjust. Iba na yung buhay natin ngayon. We're moms already and we need to adjust so that we can do that right we can take care of ourselves the the right way and that brings me to my next point which is number four is i need to adjust all my life lagi ako nakafocus sa sarili ko all my life wala akong hindi ko naranasan na may umaasa sa akin na ibang tao but when i became a mom dun ko na experience yung meron ng isang person na talagang nakadepend sa akin sa lahat ng bagay and it really was very stressful on my part but I really learned to adjust one tip na pwede kong i-share sa inyo is also something that my mom shared with me when I gave birth sinabi niya sa akin na gumawa ako ng schedule for me and my son because then mas madadalian ako and mas magugustuhan ng baby ko and true enough nung ginawa ko yun na-realize ko na mas nakakagawa ko ng ibang bagay na-realize ko kasi dati wala nung wala kong schedule na ginagawa. Ang hirap kasi parang ang dami kong nasasayang na oras and hindi ko na a-address minsan yung pangailangan ng anak ko. Minsan hindi ko siya napapalikuan. Sorry, pero I have to say it. Nung hindi ako nagsa-schedule, may mga ganong moments talaga na nakakalimutan kong gawin yun dahil hindi nakaplan yung araw ko. But when I started doing a schedule for me and my son, life was easier. So, that's one tip. That's one tip so that you can survive your postpartum phase. Actually, napansin ko din na nung kumuha ko ng schedule for our son, unintentionally namin siyang na-sleep train. And that was very advantageous for me and my husband. Kasi wala nga kaming katulong, di ba? It was very helpful for us. So, that can help you. If you wanna do it, I'll really highly suggest make a schedule for you and your son. And if may gusto kong gawin for yourself, ganun din. Gumawa ka rin ng schedule for yourself. You plan ahead. You plan ahead para hindi mo nakakaligtaan na ibigay yung pangangailangan ng anak mo. So, at magagawa mo rin yung para sa'yo. Number five is I do not have to be perfect. I do not need to know everything. Hindi ko kailangan malalaman lahat. Hindi ko kailangan matutunan lahat. Because it comes, it will happen as we go. We will learn as we go. Sa lahat naman sa buhay, we will learn as we go. I also fell into the trap of comparing myself with other moms, which is a bad idea. Yung iniisip mo, bakit yung ibang mothers, ang ayos-ayos nila, nakapag-ayos sila, nakapagkulot sila ng buhok, nakakapag-makeup sila, habang may inaalagaan silang bata. Just don't compare yourself with other moms because maybe those moms, those other moms who get to do those things, may katulong sila or may mga tumutulong sa kanila sa pag-aalaga ng anak nila. In my case, wala talaga kaming ganun. Wala kaming katulong. So, hindi ko talaga magagawa yun. It really put too much pressure on me. I really felt very ugly and hindi talaga siya nakatulong sa recovery ko, honestly comparing myself. So, it's really bad. You need to realize that you just gave birth and hindi siya madali. And you need to focus on your recovery more than looking good all the time. Of course, we want to look our best all the time. But for now, kailangan natin tiisin na hindi muna natin yun magagawa. We need to give ourselves a break because if we focus too much on that, we'll just stress ourselves out unnecessarily and it's not gonna help with our recovery. Number six is Take one day at a time. Of course, recovery takes time and we really need to be patient about it. But don't worry kasi ang postpartum, it's not gonna last forever. Ilang weeks lang naman yan. So you need to take one day at a time para hindi mo miss out yung mga blessings na binibigay ni God every day. Like, watching your son sleep, ang saya-saya kaya nun, watching your baby sleep. Those are one of the things that I really enjoy. Watching him sleep, seeing him play by himself, seeing him laugh, seeing him smile. Yun talaga, enjoy those little things. Kasi those are the things na hindi natin napapansin pag nakafocus tayo so much on we need to recover fast, we need to recover quickly, I need to be there, not here. You need to live in the moment also. Um, para hindi mo mamimiss out yung mga blessings na yan, yung mga little joys of having a baby. There will come a time na pag nakita mo ng malaki na yung anak mo, you'll regret not 
enjoying those times na natutulog siya nung baby pa siya. Ang saya-saya ang panoorin ng baby matulog. It gives me so much joy and peace. Kaya, isa yun sa mga dapat natin i-enjoy. Number seven is be discerning. Pag nanganak na tayo, and even before that, we will be receiving a lot of comments and a lot of unsolicited advice from older moms. And sometimes, sa dami ng mga matatanggap natin mga advice at mga comments, minsan nagko-conflict na sila to the point na parang hindi na natin alam kung ano yung susundin natin. And for a new mom like me, it could really get overwhelming. Ako personally, na-overwhelm talaga ako. Na-stress ako ng konti. Kaya one of the things that the Lord taught me during that time was that I need to be discerning. You don't need to follow everything that you hear or everything that they tell you. You need to screen out the ones that will be helpful for you and the ones that will not be helpful for you. How do I know if it's gonna be beneficial for me? Number one, it should not incite fear in me. Dapat hindi ako matatakot. And number two is, is it based on something that is true or is it based on facts? Yung sinabi ba nila ay napag-aralan? Mahilig kasi ako sa science and I tend to gravitate towards those things na napag-aralan, na nagawa ng research, and was really proven to be true. Kaya those are the things that I really focus on more. And if you're like me, hindi rin ako mahilig sa mga myths or old wives' tales. Knowing these things, knowing what is going to be helpful for you. That's really going to help you with your recovery and with coping up with all of these new things that are coming your way. And it will really help make life easier for you as a new mom. So ito yung mga bagay na natutunan ko during my postpartum phase. I hope you learned something from this and na-encourage ko kayo somehow in a way and na-inspire ko kayo in a way. If you're a new mom, I wish you all the best and this is my way of showing my support to you and encouragement. I hope na somehow lumakas yung doob ninyo through this video and don't worry, you can do it. We were made for this. God made us for this so you will be able to make it. And so we just need to trust in the Lord. We need to let go of ourselves. We need to adjust to our situation. We need to be discerning and we also need to take one day at a time. We do not have to be perfect. Okay, mommies? So I hope that you were encouraged by this video, lalo na for the new moms out there who are still struggling with their postpartum phase. Hang in there and don't forget that we are here for you. And I hope that you are inspired and you learned something from this video. And I will see you again in my next video. Thank you for watching.